This is the second part in a two-part review of this game. Part 1 came out in 2019, the year we thought we hated until 2020 came along and gave us an everlasting fear of the number 20. <laughs> Mario Maker 2 was made by Sega in the year 1712. Galileo was a big fan, but found the Italian stereotypes offensive. Da -da 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 -da. My Mario Maker 2 review marked a turning point in my life as a human being who makes videos. Since I was about 15, I decided it would be literally impossible for me to reach my dream of 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. Every day after school, though, I would still make YouTube videos about Halo 3, and in those moments, I was really, truly happy. As I got older, I became distracted by the important things. And by the age of 20, I had stopped making videos. By 25, I had a high-level chemistry qualification, a job in pharmaceuticals, and depression to the point that a speedy and uncontrolled descent down a flight of stairs seemed to be the best investment into my future. Ow. One day I met my now wife, Emma, who runs her own cake making business. Wait, no, marching band? That can't be right. From her, I learned that I could work for myself. So I became a YouTuber, immediately quit my job with no fallback, and made my first video in over a decade, which, and I can't believe I'm saying this, was a review of Mario Maker 1, a game I've literally never played. What were you thinking, Matt? After two years of trying almost every idea I could think of, from reviewing the Fallout themed beer to recreating the We Are Number One music video in Fallout 4, I mean, Honestly, I think this one's pretty good. I eventually decided to make a commentary video exactly like this one you're watching right now, and it immediately took off. It was then I realized that I would have to pause everything in my life and do nothing but review as many games as I could, as fast as I could. The plan was to edit together a total of six reviews. The work divided evenly among the three men. In the end, they wrote 15 reviews in the span of one year. John Jay got sick after editing one. James Madison edited four. Up is not jump, edited the other ten. How do you edit like you're running out of time? Edit day and night like you're running out of time. Every day you edit like you're running out of time. Like you're running out of time. Are you running out of time? I haven't learned. Anything. Do you know what happens when you edit like you're running out of time? It's like marathoning the Lord of the Rings Extended Edition. You come out the other side and you think to yourself, What the fuck is a Gandalf? 500,000 subscribers in the bank and I didn't know how to write, edit, pace, or even structure my videos. I wasn't even sure how to write jokes anymore. With each video I became more and more unhappy with the outcome. I saw mistakes but I didn't know how to correct them. All these feelings and doubts culminated, in my mind at least, in my review of Mario Maker 2. To me it was bloated and poorly paced. I didn't want to to look or think about it, so I left it unfinished. Now, before we get all doom and gloom, I've learned from the mistakes I saw in that video. I feel like what I do is good again, and I'm happy with the methods I use to make my videos. All I need to do is forget about that video that brought me so much pain and move on. Post Mario Maker 2 is a nightmare, then we'll talk. It's been half a year. Part 2 when? All right, Jesus, fine, fuck. Oh look it has ramps now, zippity fucking doodah! In my first video I talked about how older 2D Mario games were basically just a series of games that continually one-upped themselves. Mario 1 was a series of mechanics executed to near perfect levels of quality. Mario 3 had more level variety than New Zealand, and Super Mario World had more secrets than my wife. What made these games truly special though was how they subtly ramped difficulty and complexity throughout each game, continually expanding on mechanics we'd seen in previous levels while also relentlessly incorporating a barrage of new ideas as seamlessly as Peach's dresses. This progression gave each game a sense of enormous momentum that could only be achieved by carefully crafting a series of levels that were designed to be played in a somewhat linear fashion. A Mario game where you only play standalone levels without any continuity would not only be missing its best feature, but would be losing its entire identity as a whole. Nintendo thought about this concept for one second and released a Mario game where you could only make and play standalone levels. Oh no! <laughs> That's right kids, Mario levels without any of the features that make Mario games worth playing. New mechanics on every level, only if they've been in a previous game. A linear progression of ideas wonderfully executed over an entire world of exciting themes and visuals. No! Slanted terrain? We did it. This... is where this game is limited beyond reproach. Reproach! The fundamental thing that makes Mario levels worth playing is missing from Mario Maker 2, a game that's only function is to make Mario levels worth playing. Really drop the ball here, Nintendo, I'm gonna get my channel deleted. I see you down there, tip-tapping in the comments. Uh, there are worlds now in Mario Maker, so you can make a series of levels? Uh, bad review. Oh. 
We'll get to worlds. Before we do that though, let's talk about Mario Maker's incredible level editor and try and loosen Nintendo's demonetizing grip from my channel. Only joking, we covered a Hamilton song earlier. This video's a fucking write-off. Part Uno. Level Editor. Question. What's good about Mario Maker 2's Level Editor? Answer. Quite a lot. Using Mario Maker 2's Level Editor is far more fun than actually playing the levels that can be made with it. This is oddly similar to my theory that God had a whale of a time throwing the universe together, but now he's fucked off and we're left to endure the results. Right here. Earth. A perfect place to live. Mm, but it needs something. A huge sun! <laughs> I hope it's not too hot for you. Oh, Jesus! Is it normal for my skin to be toasty like this? <laughs> Speak for yourself, man. I feel great. Mario Maker 2 is probably one of the best pieces of level building software ever made. So like the 2D games before it, Mario Maker is a game that still managed to achieve something fairly significant. The building of levels is basically a game in of itself, which comes across like it was easy for Nintendo to design, but I assume it was harder than a thwomp. Thwomp. This is usually where I'd quickly list out all the clever little touches Nintendo added to Mario Maker 2 that makes the level building system so impressively fun. But I kind of do that in all my videos, so I've instead decided to write a poem. <clears throat> I am a player of Mario Maker 2, and found when building levels no figures or values were used. To make something longer, you just drag it out. The same with paths and enemies. You can even move the trout. To fill in a box, just drop someone inside. Coopers, bloopers, but a Lakutu, I can't seem to hide. Changing enemies with items removes wings and they drop. Make any change, the Bring never stops. Starting a new theme is a complete visual treat. You can even stack shit. My god, what a feat. Picture is all in front of you, here in one game. Mario Maker 2. It ruined my life! The best feature by far though is when you place an item. The name of the item is spoken in time with the game's music. My favourite example of this being when you place an on-off switch. <laughs> I loved it so much I made this great level. I hear there are some other games like Little Big Planet that have great level editors, but I purged my PlayStation after I finished my Red Dead Redemption 2 review because I only use consoles that can turn on in under five minutes and actually have games with gameplay on them. One word to describe Mario Maker 2's level editor is intuitive. Another as simple as shit. You can't ever really set any specific values when controlling objects' parameters, so don't really ever have full control over what's going on in a level. What I mean by this is you can't control the exact speed ramps move at, the exact amount of time P-blocks are active for, or the exact rate in which flame pads change. This can't be good. The thing is, Mario Maker 2 is so simple, you can pick up and start making levels right away. If Nintendo did give us this level of control, I think it would quickly lose its simplicity. Honestly though, I think it's because Nintendo just don't trust us. What, you think they're gonna add the ability to set a numerical horizontal scrolling speed? This is the company that released Mario Galaxy 2 with an instructional DVD. Press the A button on the Wii Remote to jump. I'm just surprised this thing doesn't remind me every few seconds to breathe so I can continue to intake oxygen and survive. This lack of control also creates some limitation in what you can do in Mario Maker 2. And limitation is the queen of creativity. For example, since there are no ways to set specific timers in this game, like the duration of P-blocks, people have created contraptions that act as timers, like shells that break blocks over a specific amount of time. With the right combination of things in Mario Maker 2, you can pretty much make any kind of level you want. Your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could that they didn't stop to think they should. And although I'm personally not a huge fan of these kinds of levels, they show how incredibly versatile and creative people can be when given a set of tools that have limitations. Like everything you're seeing on screen right now is actually all part of a working calculator. Boring. Part ducks. Uh, playing fun levels. It's honestly a little exciting. Countless new Mario levels to play, the combined efforts and creativity of millions of people coming together to create what are extensively playable works of art. Someone get Nintendo on the phone, we found a new level designer. Okay, Mario Maker 2 has a ranking system to help you find the best user-made levels, and here are the top 10 levels available to play at the time of writing this review. In four of them, you must follow an exact trail of coins. In one, you hold run and automatically win, and in four others, you win by pressing absolutely nothing. You press... Nothing. 
Why did you do this to me? Die, Mario! Ah! You see, a million monkeys, sure, will eventually produce the entire works of Shakespeare, but there'll also be an innumerous amount of typewriters jammed with feces. So we end up with a couple million of these head scratchers and a near infinite number of levels featuring Bowser riding towers of his own children, cleverly titled Turbulent Terrapin Turmoil. Incest. The issue here is these levels do well because they have lots of likes from people. But what do people know? People like Coldplay and voted for the Nazis. You can't trust people, Jeremy. To overcome this population bias, I decided to try some new courses that had just been uploaded, as these would be completely random and probably a bit more fun. <laughs> And that covers user-generated levels. They're pretty disappointing, and there aren't any other ways to search for levels other than your friends sending them to you, but I don't have any friends. Part Dory. The story. Mario Maker 2 also comes with a story mode of about 100 different levels made by actual game developers. These levels are all fun and solidly made, but are still just a collection of standalone levels, most of which just focus on exploring a specific item or object. So although this whole mode ramps well in difficulty as you go through it, there are still no notable themes or any real gameplay progression over this part of the game. This mode is great for giving inspiration for the sort of things you can do when building levels, but if you want an actual Mario game, just buy new Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe Switch Edition. Jesus Christ, once I asked my mum for Modern Family on DVD and she accidentally got me Family Guy, ruining Christmas and the last shreds of our relationship. What would have happened if I had asked for this? I got you Super Mario Brothers Deluxe on the Game Boy, that's what you wanted, right? Get out. But I love you so- Get out! <laughs> Part 4. The Worlds. Here I come, Mario! Nintendo of course know that having a dedicated game world filled with levels you play in a somewhat linear order is an integral part of what makes Mario work as a franchise. To address this, they eventually made it possible for users to create entire worlds that they could fill with their own levels and put as little effort into it as possible. I do think the world making tool itself is pretty good. It's so simple you can learn how to use every function it has available in a couple of minutes. As a result though, you can only really put in the bare minimum of what is required to make a world and they all look fairly visually unimpressive. The big issue here though is finding good worlds made by other players. There's no ranking system here at all, so you're literally just offered up a random selection of players' worlds and expected to jump right in. Oh, a random world, I wonder what the levels here will be like. Ba -ba 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 -ba. I'm loving it. Because of the- I've been shouting too much. Because of this, you end up playing some pretty strange worlds. You load one up and you stand there mesmerized by the enchanted forest of the hour, only to enter level one and find yourself in a scorching sandy desert. What is this, a metaphor for climate change? Because I felt very moved by it. Wow, look at this frozen wasteland, can't wait to try the first level. Oh, of course, a hellish night their lava escape. What is this, Dark Souls 2? Is someone just fucking with me? The thing here is no one's adhering to the rules. One, be consistent with the themes of your worlds. Don't just randomly mix Super Mario 3D world levels with Super Mario world levels within the same world. And that's just me giving real advice. It only sounds weird here because Nintendo can't properly name their fucking games. I got you Dr. Mario World, that's what you wanted, right? You did it! Two! I couldn't come up with a second rule. Overall then, Mario Maker 2 is a fun, engaging, and well-designed tool for making Mario levels. Just don't expect Nintendo to help you fucking find them! Today's video was sponsored by ExpressVPN. But I thought VPNs didn't do anything. What do you mean, strange for speckled man that looks oddly like me because I can't afford any actors? I have ExpressVPN and I use it almost every day to watch Netflix shows that I can't get in the UK. You see, ExpressVPN allows you to reroute your connection to a server in a country of your choice. So you can watch shows and movies that aren't available in your country on Netflix, iPlayer, and other streaming services. Services. If you're on Netflix in the USA, for example, you can't watch UK Netflix shows like Rick and Morty, South Park, Modern Family, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, also known as the earthly embodiment of Christ, Red Dwarf, and so on. But I can, because I'm from the UK. Is it not obvious, darling? It's the same for UK Netflix as well. I can't usually watch US TV shows and movies like The Incredibles 2, Parks and Rec, The Office, Into the Spider-Verse. Wait, I could be watching Into the Spider-Verse. What, what are we doing? All I need to do is set ExpressVPN to a US server, click connect, and I'm ready to watch. So join me, let's face it, we haven't got anywhere else to go. Find out how you can get three months free by clicking the link in the description box below. Or go to expressvpn.com slash upisnotjump. Thanks for watching everyone, and I hope you enjoyed the video.